Greetings family, peace, love, and positive thinking. This is Guru. Thanks for visiting my channel. This vlog is about a mother's boyfriend who's charged with murder after a baby dies from a sexual assault. The mom found her boyfriend with her unresponsive daughter in the basement. This is the perpetrator, white male by the name of Benjamin Taylor, who's 32 years old, out of Cottageville, um, I'm sorry, Cottageville, West Virginia. He's accused of assaulting a 10-month-old girl who later died of her injuries. This white male right here is the perpetrator. He's the perpetrator of a sexual assault against an infant, an innocent little girl by the name of Emily Beringer. Let's get to this story. It's really disgusting, family, so just bear with me. So, family, a 10-month-old girl has died after being sexually abused by her mother's boyfriend in what one local sheriff is calling, quote, the most severe case that I've seen, unquote. Emily Beringer, who, a third, who authorities said was found bloody, swollen, and naked on the floor of her family's West Virginia basement on Monday, was pronounced dead Wednesday. Jackson County Sheriff Tony Boggs confirmed to the Huffington Post, quote, it's the most severe case that I've seen, especially with the age of the victim, and you just can't fathom this, Boggs previously told WCHS-TV. Even though an arrest has been made, we are far from being over. Benjamin Taylor, 32, was arrested Monday and charged with first-degree sexual assault. He was charged with murder Thursday, Box said. Emily Berenger was pronounced dead on Wednesday after authorities believe her mother's boyfriend sexually assaulted her. Box told Metro News that Taylor was the mother's live-in boyfriend. Taylor was found with a battered baby in the basement of his girlfriend's home Monday, authorities said. The child's mother called police after finding her daughter unresponsive. She said the basement's lights had been turned off and there was a significant amount of blood on and around her baby. Taylor denied having any knowledge of what may have happened to Emily. He said he took the baby downstairs to do laundry and, quote, blacked out at some point, WSAZ reported. Boggs told HuffPost the county's law enforcement officers knew of Taylor, but not for anything as severe as this. A cousin of Emily's mother said that, by all appearances, Taylor was extremely caring. Quote, you literally would have thought he was a Prince Charming, she was so lit up inside, Danielle Atkins told WSAZ. He wanted to do things with her, and he hung out with the kids. The only way justice is going to be served is if he feels every ounce of pain that he caused her to, Atkins said. A GoFundMe account that was initially launched by the family to help pay for the baby's medical needs is now also raising funds to pay for her funeral. Some reports have identified Emily as nine months old. The Go GoFundMe page says the baby was 10 months. The district attorney's office has declined comment when reached by Huffington Post on Thursday. The victim's family did not immediately return a, a request for comment. Taylor, the sexual abuser, 32-year-old who's now in jail, his bond has been set at $2 million. And again, family, this is the face of a child rapist 
white male, Benjamin Taylor, 32 years old, of Cottageville, West Virginia. As for Emily Beringer, may her soul rest in heaven. She was innocent and did not deserve to be treated in such an uncivilized, inhumane manner. And so I feel for this family. With that said, family, I'm going to um, end this vlog with another video that is um, talking about how it's closing the loophole for sexual predators. Let's take a listen. Not for the tremendous arrogance of Castor. History might never have been corrected. On camera for the first time, emotional testimony from Scott Cross calling for an end to the statute of limitations on sex abuse against children. Good evening, I'm Erica Sargent. Rob is on assignment. Cross says with power, prestige, and money, his abuser was especially tough to call out. And although a judge called Dennis Hastert a serial abuser, he's serving time for financial crimes only. CBS 2's Roseanne Tejas with more on efforts to close what some call a legal loophole for sexual predators. This topic, while difficult for me to discuss, is one that cannot be swept under the rug. Hastert inflicted unbelievable pain on the lives of the youth he was entrusted to care for. Yet he got a slap on the wrist. Testifying before a state senate subcommittee, Scott Cross said his then high school wrestling coach, Dennis Hastert, molested him. Dennis Hastert was a monster, yet he was protected by outdated laws. A statute of limitations on sex crimes against children, 20 years from the time Rapist. the child turns 18 or 38. Cross spoke out to child rapist. his testimony illustrating the pain of sharing your story. It is unbelievably hard to step forward and confront a person of power and trust and somebody that you idolized and respect. A person is left with shame and guilt about what happened, and it takes a very, very long time, often a lifetime, to process that and recover. The statistics are alarming. 25% of girls and 16% of boys will be sexually abused before reaching 18, says Madigan. Most won't come forward until they're 42, too late by Illinois statute. 37 other states have no such limitation. It's important to note that changing the statutes of limitations will not change the burden of proof that prosecutors must meet. There's no guarantee of conviction, but, says Madigan, a much better chance for healing. There is a trend across the nation right now to remove statutes of limitations for all crimes, Erica. So we're leaving the statute of limitations as is. No, um, there was one, there was some testimony from a public defender about adding another exception. There are two exceptions now. If there's physical evidence, the second exception, if a mandated reporter failed to report it, he thought if you added, if there were multiple victims, then somebody like Dennis Hastert would not have been excluded. But no one is just against dropping the statute altogether. Okay, Roseanne, thank you. So, family, I apologize that the uh, audio wasn't quite going with the video, but nonetheless, you got the um, message, I hope. If not, do a rewind. But, family, I do appreciate your time. Thank you very much for watching. Once again, I appreciate you liking, sharing. If you haven't already, please subscribe. This is Guru Peace, Love, and Positive Thinking, and until next time, I'm out.